and welcome to Understanding Photography with Kim Ayers episode 190 and it also happens to be the fourth anniversary of these podcasts. Four years ago today, um, what today or yesterday, yeah I think <laughs> around about the April 7th, um, I did the very first Understanding Photography with Kim Ayers um, and on top of that we also have the self-portrait challenge for which there's been a few entries, um, maybe not quite as many as I'd hoped, I think a few people chickened out, um, maybe just ran out of time. However, uh, we still have some great photos to look through. So, um, yeah, stick around. That wasn't the one I actually meant to do. Um, which one did I mean to do? That's it, yeah. Well, so, yes, here we are. Four years on, still getting tripped up by the technology. Uh, so, yes, here we are live on YouTube. Uh, so leave a comment. Let me know where you are from, where you're, what the weather's doing, what's going on in your part of the world, all that kind of stuff. So we have a live chat. You can join in and... Um, and yes, uh, that would be, be good to hear from you. Unless you happen to be watching the recorded version, of course, you can still leave a comment. There are places to leave comments down there. Uh, generally speaking, YouTube tends to let me know that they've been left. So if you have any questions um, or comments or anything like that, feel free to leave them as well. And of course, while you're here, click the like button. Uh, YouTube does like the algorithms if you can click like, all that kind of thing. So yes, where should we start? I think we what we should really do is start with the fact that this is the fourth anniversary of these podcasts. Um, and yeah, I, certainly when I started them, I had no idea. I, when I started these podcasts, I thought, well, I will do them for three months because initially, you may remember, this time four years ago, we just started lockdown, certainly here in the UK. And there was a sense of, well, OK, it could last for as long as up to three months. So I thought, well, I've got about three months worth of material. Let's make a start. Let's see how it goes. Um, and here we are four years later. I don't think I actually fully expected it to be four years later. Or if I did, if I sort of thought, well, what if I'm still here in four years? I would probably have thought I would have achieved global domination and be pushing Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bozos and Elon Musk out of the kind of top lists of uh, sort of cyber entrepreneurs. Um, Obviously, that hasn't quite happened. Um, however, we have in fact reached four years. So quite often at this point on an anniversary, I will stick candles into a little cake, chocolate cake or something. However, we did have quite a bit too much chocolate at Easter last weekend. So I'm going <laughs> an anniversary apple. So um, four candles here. Um, that's four candles, not fork handles. For anybody who remembers that old two Ronnie sketch. Um, so happy anniversary. Yay! Got them all out in one go. If I ever get up to the 25th anniversary, I'd probably be holding a melon. <laughs> right, I can see we have a few comments. We have a few people in already. So April says, Greetings all from a mostly sunny Long Island, New York. Had a little shaken this week. Did not feel it, my husband. Ah, yes, I've got a couple of friends from uh, Northeast America who uh, I saw had been uh, commenting on that. You don't have a mild earthquake there. Somebody said it was like uh, it was sort of thing there. Oh, there's a truck going past. Oh, that must be a big truck. How big is that truck? Oh, it's something more. It's not a truck. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I um, hope, hope you didn't have any major problems uh, with that other than kind of the weird experience of going through the earthquake. Certainly, I've never been through anything like that, so I can't even begin to imagine or comment on it or compare stories. Um, Susan says, good afternoon from a beautiful day in Kukubri. Spring has arrived at last. Quite windy, though. Yes, this is true. Kukubri is just nine miles down the road, so pretty usually the same weather, though not always. Uh, yes, it has been bright and sunny, despite the fact the weather forecast did say it was supposed to be raining all day. Very windy, though. Um, Robert, uh, Robert Schaefer joins us from uh, bright and sunny Dallas, Texas. and says, too bad the total eclipse is tomorrow. This is true. For those of you who are in North America experiencing the eclipse tomorrow, I want to see your photos or your variations. Now, other Robert um, promised that he would actually attempt to do a selfie with the, with the eclipse. I said he would definitely get extra smug points for that if he does. <laughs> um, so where are we? Uh, Marilyn says, wow, April earthquake. Hello and hello from Colorado. Um, John says, good day all from a nice, uh, oh, nice day in Columbus, Ohio. Um, Susan's admitting in, uh, yes, she chickened out from doing the um, selfie. So you've missed out on double smug points. Yes, I'm doing double smug points today. Um, I'll come back to that one in a minute though. 
Meg says, good afternoon, everyone. Um, oh, and then April saying, four years, crazy, happy anniversary. Oh, Sandra's joined us, says, hi, everyone, from a windy Birmingham, and congratulations on four years. John says, congrats on four years. VG's joined us as well, says, good evening, friends, and a very happy anniversary to us. Uh, that's from India. Um, uh, Susan says, happy anniversary. I was a late joiner, but I've learned a lot. Thank you. I'm delighted for that. Uh, Mag Meg says, congratulations on four years of the podcast. And um, Robert says, meant to send in a selfie, just never did. Ah, uh, well, you again, missed out on the double smug point. So yes, today is the, um, I'm doing, it was the self-portrait challenge. So last week I talked about all these different ways you can do self-portraits and to get inventive and to place cameras in weird and wonderful places. Um, however, I think most people kind of went for something a little bit more basic. Um, generally speaking, I knew it was always going to be slightly problematic. Self-portraits, generally speaking, are the hardest kind of photography for most photographers. Not only is there technical difficulties in the fact that you're not looking through the camera at the point you take it, unless you're being very, very clever with um, other cameras and mirrors and what have you. Um, or... Uh, well, or actually, the bigger problem tends to be the fact that most photographers I know tend to prefer by a huge amount to be behind the camera rather than in front of it. In fact, part of the reason they've even developed that photography is because they found early on that by being behind the camera, they didn't have to be in front of it. So every time there's a group gathering, they get to hold the camera rather than kind of squirm in front. So I always knew it was going to be a difficult one. Fewer people were going to take past part. So because of that level of um, overcoming the psychological blocks but and the technica and the technicals and the fact that it is, hey, fourth anniversary, I've decided to do double smug points today. So basically, generally speaking, anybody who en enters the challenge usually gets 10 smug points. Uh, today, however, I'm offering 20 smug points. And likewise, the I'm, I, at the end, I will uh, offer up my top three, which usually get 10, 20 and 30 smug points. This time they'll be getting 20, 40 and 60 smug points. So for those of you who did chicken out or forgot to send you a new image, you missed out on some extra smug points. Now, in terms of the smug point leaderboard, we'll just do a quick look at that. Basically, we got to, um, because at the end of March, we not only finished the, the month of March, but we'd also finished the first quarter. So March itself, just the, the single month, Nadia was the winner for that with 70 smug points, um, beating VG and Susan, who are both on 60 each, uh, which meant that she gets to choose a topic for a challenge for this month. And uh, she's actually chosen shadows. So I'll talk a little bit more about that at the, uh, at the end of the podcast um, about uh, the, the, the shadows challenge. Um, uh, I, so I'm going to have a little think about that, set that up. Um, and then... Um, what else we got? Oh, yes, and then there was the quarterly. So for um, accumulated points for January, February, and March was actually won by VG with two hundred smug points, uh, beating Susan at ninety five and Janet at one hundred eighty. So Susan kind of you came twi uh, second twice. So if you just put in one more image, <laughs> maybe for critique or something like that, you'd have won. Um, However, so there we are. Uh, so VG uh, now gets a podcast dedicated specifically to a theme or photos of her choosing. Now, still to confirm, we had a little chat uh, yesterday, but um, she, uh, we're looking at it's probably going to be something like group photography or family photography or something like that. But that's to still be confirmed. But that will happen sometime over the next couple of months. Um, so that's where we are with the um, smug points leaderboard, but it basically it means that we're back to a point of zero again. So um, those who enter, so all of you who've turned up and left a comment today, you'll all get five smug points. In fact, hey, let's do the double. We'll do, do, do double smug points today. So you'll all get 10 smug points for uh, just turning up and leaving a comment. Um, everybody who's entered one will get 20 smug points instead of the usual 10. And then, like I said, I'll do the, uh, the I'll get double smug points for the top three as well. And maybe a commended. We'll see what we've got. Um, what else have we got? Oh, a couple more people are commenting. Um, where do we get to? Uh, um, there's a, uh, April said, con oh, congrats to Nadia and uh, to Yay VG. Um, Robert says, howdy all from Texas. Sorry for being late. And sorry, I wasn't able to participate in the challenge. And other Robert says, uh, Good morning, neither were uh, also lazy, lazy and forgetful. <laughs> right, yes, this is the point of the smug points. So the smug points are supposed to be encouraging you, get a good gamification going on. Um, works obviously to different degrees with different people. 
Okay, right. So where are we at then? So yes, thank you to everybody who sent in um, sent in a, a, a picture because because like I say, I do know that it was going to be particularly difficult. So today, then, what we're going to do is we're going to look through the um, the, the uh, images that have been sent in. And basically, for those of you who uh, either took part or didn't take part, and you're looking for a little bit of inspiration, maybe some of these photos will help you to do that. So what we're going to do then is we are going to start with, who will we start with? Let's start with Sandra um, in Birmingham. So let me just do that and then do that. So Sandra, I thought Sandra's a good one to kick off. So she says, here's a self-portrait of me in the back garden for Sunday's challenge. Much harder than it looked, even being able to see myself in the flipped camera screen. So yeah, this is where we come into the technical. So Sandra's placed herself in the garden. She's got herself at the plant, uh, uh, pruning um, clippers at the, at the ready. Um, and she sort of set up the camera and she, uh, she's got one of these where you can use the pull out the screen so she can see herself. However, you do really always run into that problem that unlike um, a selfie, where what tends to happen is the picture in the in the uh, phone, they do a mirror image so that it's just like looking in a mirror. And we're used to that. When you use the flipped screen, uh, the, the, the screen on what have you, it's looking at you directly. So suddenly if you seem to if you move to the right, it, your your image seems to lurch to the left and trying to line yourself up just it goes a bit weird because it's completely moot. Your image moves in completely the opposite direction to the way you tend to be expecting it, having spent however many decades using a mirror. So, um, yes, I absolutely um, tricky thing to get right there, uh, Sandra. So, um, uh, she, uh, she, and she she admitted that it did. She did find it kind of pretty difficult looking at the flip screen, but hey, that's part of the learning process. So, uh, nice one there, Sandra. Um, thanks very much for. For, for sending that one in um, and for taking part. So 20 smug points for you for doing so. Um, so uh, April says, cute Sandra. And Susan says, well done, Sandra. Uh, beautiful camellia too. Ah, I recognise the flowers. That's way, way beyond me. <laughs> right. OK, next up then, we're going to go to Jack. Um, now, Jack was getting a little inventive. Um, so uh, some of you may remember a little while, a few weeks back or when we were doing the still life challenge um, or was it reflected? So I can't remember now. Um, uh, Jack was playing around with uh, these silver balls on top of a mirror with mirrors behind it and all the rest of it. So it looks like either he took this around the same time or did a fresh setup for this using the same um, same props, uh, but using a, going at it for a different way. And Jack says, uh, looking back into the camera and thinking if this setup is OK. So two big mirrors and five small steel balls checking. and wonder if it's all well. Um, I could have done. I could have photo stacked the images, but then you would not have seen me as the main subject. And that's a really good point. So um, there's two things going on. Two things what he's talking about here is basically what would happen if he'd had the steel balls in the foreground um, in focus and if he had either because he'd focused on the balls and not him that would have meant that the photo would have been about the steel balls and not him um, so it wouldn't really have been so much of a self-portrait or if he'd photo stacked and by that he means taken several photos um, with focus at different point and then you photo stack so that the image is sharp from front to back but had he done that again what it would have done is it would have you we would have then ended up with really noticing. I mean, here we can see reflection of the reflection. Um, so I'm presuming that he's shooting into a mirror, but at the same time, we've got this bit here. And this then would have been in focus. All the, oh, sorry, we'll come on to, oh, where are we gone? Here, oh, so you've got a, a free, <laughs> free quick look at the ones ahead there. Um, but this here, so we would have seen all these in focus reflections of Jack on the steel balls and that certainly would have then detracted from the bit here so i'm assuming that jack's camera is sitting just below uh the steel balls there um so i think one of the one of the things i would say though is it, it, that that common thing of if you're shooting into a mirror is you very often end up looking at yourself rather than looking into the lens. So he's not quite looking at us. He's not looking straight into the lens here. It's another problem I often see when 
I, well, I've caught myself out of it plenty of times when doing a selfie on the camera. We end up looking at ourselves in the picture rather than into the lens part. We end up looking into the middle of it. Um, and consequently, our eye line is always looking slightly off. So whenever we put the picture up to everybody else looking at it, um, it looks like we're sort of looking at their ear or over their shoulder. So whenever doing a selfie or a self-portrait in the mirror or something like that, always remember to look directly into the reflected lens or into the lens of the, the camera. Uh, phone. Um, so yeah, fun photo there. Um, uh, thanks for sending that one in, Jack. Uh, so um, oh, Susan says a great idea, Jack. There. Oh, <laughs> I'm not getting. I really am messing up the technicals today. Right. Okay. Yes, it is one of those things. Like I say, four years on. I mean, I I have a handful of buttons to press and and flip backwards and forwards on the screen. Um, I. I Obviously not my, I, I I can I can kind of do it where it's all in one with the camera. I've learned, but even then I'm you know we all make the mistakes. But trying to work out this bit and do the presentation all at the same time. <laughs> um, oh, Robert says too much celebrating the fourth year anniversary. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe too too many apples. <laughs> um, Jack says thank you. This is um, uh, this is like it is looking back at you. Yes. Cool. OK, right. So next up, then we have uh, we'll do John. And uh, John went for um, selfie in the garden, I think. So he says, I took around 20 photos and chose this one. So it's a phone photo handheld on my balcony. So I did ask him why he decided to go, you know, because um, the fact is, yes, you can do selfie, but you, you still there's still choices to be made. Um, what background are you going to have? Why are you wearing a hat? Whatever else it is. Um, so he said basically he wanted a background that was not distracting. And he thinks he looks better in a hat most of the time. Um, <laughs> the immediate thing that always makes flicks to my mind, I have to say, maybe I shouldn't say it, but is um, are you suffering from or going bald? I certainly, I, I never used to worry about hats until I started going bald and suddenly I found myself wearing them an awful lot more. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Um, however, so yes, a, a hatted John um, with a blue sky background using his phone. One of the great things about the phone uh, as well, actually, is these things are so sophisticated these days that despite the fact that the sun is not only behind him, but almost kind of coming straight into the lens, it is still automatically adjusting for the fact that, you know, so it's exposing for the sky behind and is exposing for his face. and. We'll all know that if you, I mean, if I was taking a photo of him like this with my DSLR or my mirrorless camera, if I exposed to get that amount of blue sky, blue in the sky, his face would probably be in complete silhouette. Or if I was exposing for his face, the sky would be whited out. I would have to take two or three photos, different exposures, combine them in order to be able to get something which the phone does automatically. So sometimes these things are actually uh, of more use than um, your DSLR. But it depends obviously where you're gonna use the photo and all the rest of it. So uh, yeah, thanks for sending that one in, um, John, and uh, for, for taking the time to uh, take part in the, in the, um, in, the <laughs> in the challenge. Right, uh, so what, are, oh, April says, love the hat, John. And Sandra says, yes, good, a good selfie considering the contrasting lighting. Right, OK, next up then, I've got Andy. So Andy, oh yeah, Andy sent in, where are we? Uh, I'll close that one, maximise that one. Andy sent in this one, uh, which is quite astonishing, really. Um, this is a full on kind of uh, professional shoot. Um, Andy says, uh, one for the self-portrait challenge, this was mainly a test to see what lighting and colours worked with a backdrop I'd painted. I'm calling it the Japanese tea ceremony. And yeah, oh, the, what, um, what Andy has done here is uh, very often, I, I mean, I, was, I talked about this last week, very often when I'm doing self-portraits, they largely come out of a, a need to test something out, only I didn't have anybody else around to test it with me or for me. Um, so I, you know, I don't have models to hand. Occasionally my daughter Meg's pretty good for if I ask her to come and stand here, but she's not always about or 
sometimes it's just easier for me to kind of do something up set up a self-portrait so that I can get the lighting I can get the color I can get and work out all the bits that I need so that maybe this is in advance of um, doing a shoot with somebody else whereby I don't want to have to be working out all the details on the day um, instead I would rather kind of have a, a, an advanced knowledge uh, before I go into it and uh, and Andy's uh, the, the backdrop I mean you can buy plenty of backdrops you can you know use dark sheets you can use a piece of fleece you can use anything and then photoshop it smooth afterwards but by the sound of it Andy's actually painted his own backdrop which is uh, pretty impressive uh, something I've wondered about doing sometimes but never quite got around to it and then he sort of set this up because he wants to know what the colors are going to be like and as chances are this might have been one of a series of of setups that he did but but at the same time then he's sort of gone a bit characterful with it as well I like the kind of um, the expression on the face the fact he's holding up the the cup he's got the kimono on it's a real fun kind of portrait this um i really like it i think that, and there's a um you know superb technical detail uh, set up with the lighting polishing up in the editing as well uh never underestimate that as well it's, it's done very smoothly um the fact that you know he's darkened down it's kind of giving it a bit of a vignette so light hitting his hand or this side of the kimono isn't you know isn't being quite so strong um, yeah, it was a superbly done photo. So, um, smug point to you there, Andy, and many thanks for sending that one in. Um, uh, where are we? Oh, Susan says, oh, wow, brilliant, Andy, great lighting. April says, Andy, great shot, love the pose and look. Sandra says, very professional portrait, Andy. Robert says, very, uh, very nice, Andy, good job in the lighting too. Uh, Susan says, really like the three-quarter profile. Um, April says, and you have the look of a general, <laughs> a general in a kimono. Um, and Sandra also says, well done on painting the backdrop, looks really good. And Vici says, loving the kimono and attitude. Yeah, clearly gone down well, that one, Andy, with everybody else too. Um, and John Harvey also says, really good shot, Andy. All right, next up then, we're going to go to Meg. And Meg said, um, Hi Dad, on Easter Sunday, so last week when we were all eating too much chocolate, I was being really silly, taking a photo of myself and the Easter chocolate bunny. <laughs> I used the window light coming into the living room and I was trying to get my reflection in my tablet with the chocolate bunny. So here we can see, so it's not, so we've got Meg with the chocolate bunny and the reflection of Meg with the chocolate bunny. And because the light's coming from the front and even though the, the tablet's switched off so it's kind of dark screen but it's partly reflective so we've got two megs for the price of one so brilliantly done meg i really like the way that you've you've given some thought to that and um uh, you know looking to i think sometimes incorporating mirrors incorporating reflective surfaces uh sort of certainly adds an extra dimension to the to the uh, to any self-portrait um, so uh, really nicely done um, well done Meg it's, it's double smug points to you thanks for sending that sending me that one uh, right where are we um, oh, oh April says Meg adorable idea Sandra says lovely photo Meg John says I love your selfie work Meg uh, good work and uh, Sue says well done Meg love the reflection right okay so next up we're going to go to Nadia and Nadia um i don't think was able to join us today but she said where are we uh yeah i'm off on holiday on friday so that's two days ago and i don't know what the wi-fi will be like where i'm going so i hope you've gone somewhere nice anyway uh so so eek here is myself portrait uh reading a book yuck <laughs> well you've you've gone ahead and you've done it you've got the book reading um so we've got the kind of the back of the book here i might have suggested it feels like you're kind of a little bit squeezed in the side there um but it's sort of trying to go for that sort of natural sense you've taken you whether you've set the timer or you've got your arms stretched out i'm not totally sure but you've taken the photo um sort of to catch you kind of in that sense of uh, being observed rather than looking straight into the lens so you're kind of doing something else um so yeah well done there Nadia thanks for sending that one in um, and uh, I really hope you're enjoying the holiday wherever you've gone you didn't actually tell me where you were going um, but hopefully somewhere 
somewhere pleasant and doing something you would you would like. Um, oh, Meg says thank you for your lovely comments, and uh, April says what pretty white hair, Nadia. Yes, I always thought I was going to have bright silver hair. I thought my, when I was younger, my uh, grandfather uh, on my mother's side had thick silver hair. And I thought, oh, and I had quite thick hair when I was younger. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get really kind of, that's that's the way I'm going to go. And I was doing fine up until my 40s. And then the bald patch appeared and then the hair started receding. And clearly I'm not going to have those wonderful, beautiful silver locks. <laughs> Never mind. Right. OK, where are we up to now? Let's go on to April. OK, so yes, April sent in this one. So some of you saw the glance of that one earlier. Um, and April says, this is my submission for a self-portrait. Nothing really creative, but I was able to use face editing for the first time. So I was experimenting and it's fascinating how making your eyebrows darker and your teeth whiter makes you look younger. I also worked on one blemish. I took this picture by wrapping my arm around the tree and using my right hand to take the picture. I just looked into the camera like someone else was taking the picture. So actually, if you're using your right, it looks in this as though you're using your left arm to take your, take your photo. Whereas if it was your right arm, that means the image has also become flipped. The flipped image, um, we always tend to prefer ourselves. Some, some now, my, my camera, take, I take a photo of it, it looks like it's a mirror as I'm taking it, but then once I've taken it, it flips the image back so that it is actually the way everybody else has seen it, it's the normal way around. Uh, but there are some cams out there that I know they sort of flip the image and then that's the image you end up with. And one of the slight problems you have with that is the fact that, well, it looks great to you, but it, looks, it might look slightly odd to everybody else because part of the problem we have is that, um, nobody's face is perfectly symmetrical and so if we've you know 90 percent of people have one eye slightly larger than the other we have the pointier eyebrow the pointier eyebrow the curvier eyebrow we part your hair on one side more than the other smile slightly out of more one side of the face than the other so if you flip the image so that um to you it looks more like you because that's how you're used to seeing yourself in the mirror but to everybody else suddenly your face is slightly the wrong way around and it looks a little bit odd so this is where you run into self-portrait difficulty. Now there's something else. So actually, I, I, but there's a, there's another aspect. It's it sort of uh, which I thought was quite interesting here, which is we talked you talked about the idea of essentially smoothing out a couple of little things. You've not gone wildly here. I mean, when I look, the, the edits have been done really well. I wouldn't know looking at that photo that it has been edited, which is the first rule of editing. Well done. So. Uh, congratulations on that April. The, the worst thing is when you see people who put selfies and the editing is so obvious, they've used some kind of blur thing on the face and it just looks weird. Um, but no, first rule of editing is don't make it look like it's been edited. The better the edit, the less anybody's going to notice it. So yeah, I, I'm not aware. But then the other thing is, is I don't know what the original looked like. So I don't know how whiter your teeth are or how much darker your eyebrows are or where the blemish was or what kind of blemish it was. Um, but what I will say, though, is that there is an inherent danger in the idea of making ourselves look younger, prettier, smoother skinned and what have you. And that danger lies in the fact that, um, in essence, we, we do a picture of ourselves looking younger um, and then we uh, put it up on social media. Now, when people then meet us, in person they compare us to our social media Im image and suddenly we look whatever changes we've made become really more exaggerated the other way so if we've made ourselves look younger in real life suddenly we look older if we've made ourselves look thinner in real life we look heavier um, and that's the first thing somebody knows if you think about it the first time we um, well whenever we meet anybody what we do is we instantly visually compare them pretty much to the last time we saw them. So it's that bit when you suddenly meet up from somebody that you haven't seen from 10 years ago, you immediately notice how much older they look. Um, if you meet somebody that you saw a couple of months ago, but they've changed the color of their hair, first thing you notice, they've lost weight, they've put on weight, first thing you notice, they've got a new scar, they've grown a beard, first thing you notice, right? So any changes with whatever you saw last time become something where you go, okay, that's the first thing I'm going to notice. 
So let me show you a little thing here, a little bit of a tangent, but I think this is, is, worth, is worth talking about. Um, so what we'll do is, uh, yeah, let's open Photoshop. And what I will do is I'll drag in just here a picture of me. OK, so I think I might have shown this picture before when we were talking about self-portraits last week. But OK, let's take. So here's a photo of me taken about a year and a half ago or thereabouts. But it's close enough to me uh, for now to, to be recognisable as me. But supposing then I decide, well, OK, problem is what we've got here is a, well, how old have I been? I'd have been, say, 56 back then, 55, 56 year old man. But maybe, you know, as always, whatever age you're at, you're the oldest you've ever been. So you're always older than your own mental image. And so this is why people start euthifying themselves. So what I'm going to do, let's, let me duplicate that layer here. And let's say I decide to make myself look a little bit younger. So I'm going to get the um, little tool here. And first of all, I notice, let's say I've got these, you know, I, I do tend to have kind of unruly eyebrows. So I'll, get, I'll just knock off a couple of those little kind of, the, the worst of the ones that are kind of sticking out so that my eyebrows look so just slightly less um, going mad. Um, I blame my father for this. My father had eyebrows that kind of went all over the place. So smooth them down a little bit. In fact, actually, there's a, quite a white one there. I'll just kind of do that. Uh, can I get rid of the the grey one? Uh, starting to look a bit odd. Gone a bit unnatural there. I'll just go back to that. That'll do for the moment. But then I've got a couple. I'll get rid of that little wrinkle under the eye there. And there's another one there. Oh, I've got a little bit of a mark on my face there. A couple of wrinkles here. Uh, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Uh, yeah, definitely get rid of that. That one's kind of got quite deep. Got one just above the eye here, which is kind of a bit deep as well. Kind of, and there's a little one up there. So we you know, can smooth down my forehead. We've got a little bit Botox. Actually, I need, I've got quite a kind of deep little channel there. Maybe I could smooth that one out. A little bit of a channel there. Maybe I could smooth that one out. My skin though, my skin's still got kind of various bits and pieces. Let's kind of smooth down the skin a bit. So what I'll do here now is I will go to filter. I will go to um, uh, neural filters. And uh, yeah, so the neural filters here, I've got um, various options I can do with these. And one of them is a skin smoothing option. So I can click on this and here we go. You see, it's skin smoothed. It's, um, and I can click up here and it makes it even smoother. It kind of looks a little bit off here. So I'll take it down a little bit. We're trying to make it look slightly more natural. Well, let's say, let's say we'll go to that okay so that's that'll do so now i've got smoother skin so yeah here we go so we've got a nice smooth skinned kim and the, and the, the biggest wrinkles have gone um but now while i'm at it what other changes could i do well okay if i go to uh the liquify tool here liquify gives me a whole bunch of uh new options so let me just pull this out from under here so that you can kind of um see what's going on underneath my picture. So here we've got my face here and I've got eye size here. Now I've always kind of worried that maybe my eyes were just, my uh, my kind of lids are quite a, kind of heavy. I've got a slightly heavier brow with the eyebrows and what have you. Maybe I could make my eyes bigger. So, okay, so let's make this eye bigger and I can take this eye and I can make this one bigger as well. And my nose, my nose is, uh, let me, sorry, is, is it too wide? Maybe it's not, but okay, nose width, I can make it bigger. I can, I can make, I'll narrow my nose a bit. I'll narrow my nose a bit. And um, what about, uh, I've got a face shape here as well. What other options have I got? Chin height. Now this is an interesting one. I have a little kind of goatee. Now my brother always had a slightly longer chin than me. My son always also has a very slightly longer chin than me. So maybe I could, if I wanted to kind of, um, I could uh, pull the chin up, or I can just stretch the chin down a little bit, and kind of then I sort of look a little bit more like my son and my brother. Um, jawline, jawline. Well, you know, a more masculine feature is if you, you don't want to kind of suck in the jawline, you want to have a slightly bigger jawline. A sort of, a sort of a slightly heavier jaw is kind of a bit more manly, but at the same time, it's making my face a little bit wider. So I'd rather make my face wider, I can narrow down my face a bit. So now I can click OK with this. And here we have maybe what might be considered to me, regardless to anybody else, a more idealised version of me. So my eyes are a little bit larger, my jaws a little bit squarer, my face is a little bit narrower and I've got rid of all the wrinkles. Right now, I could also go in here and dye my beard and stuff like that. But here we have an adjusted version of me. It still looks 
enough like me that if somebody saw this, they probably recognize and go, oh yes, that's Kim. They might think mm, something's maybe slightly odd, or maybe they would, depending on how well they know me. However, and this is the big however, this is the bit that I want to show you. We have my face like this, but now you get used to my face like that. What happens when I go revert to my actual face? Oh, we've gone from that to this. And suddenly the thing we notice the most is suddenly my skin looks a lot worse. I've got more wrinkles. My face is slightly wider. My eyes are slightly smaller. And so if this, if this version, this cleaned up version was my avatar, and everybody got used to their thinking that's what I looked like. When they saw me in person, the first thing they would see would be this. And the first thing they would think is I look old, crinkly and not as good as I, I think I do. So you can see it backfires. If you start putting up a smoother, younger, whatever version of you, it backfires when people meet you in person. Now, in a way, what you kind of want to do is exactly the opposite. So if I, I'll duplicate this layer again. And let's say what I'm going to do this time is if I go to uh, filter, camera raw filter, um, instead of uh, smoothing my skin, I'm going to increase the uh, increase the texture of it. So I'll increase the texture. Oh, actually, let's go clarity. Let's yeah, kind of yeah. If I move the cl that clarity bar, that kind of deepens the shadows a little bit. Maybe take the contrast fraction more, something like that. But actually, I think it's really that clarity. So that's kind of really sort of brought out much more in the way of the texture of my face. And then what I can do if I go to the back to these neural filters, um, bring that back over here. Uh, oh, no, not the neural filters. Cancel that. What I meant to do, what I meant was the liquify. Um, so I go to a filter. Um, let's go to the liquify tool. And now we will do exactly the opposite of what I did before. So instead of making my eyes larger, we'll make my eyes a little bit smaller. Um, and instead of making my nose narrower, we'll make my nose wider. Um, instead of making my uh, jawline bigger, we'll make it smaller. But we'll make my face width wider. Um, and we'll get my chin height. We'll bring that up like that. OK. So now what we've done is we've gone in the opposite direction of all the things. And here again, we have a version of me which still looks a bit like me. OK. But now we've got used to this. Now what happens if we go and see the real me instead? Oh, suddenly I look a lot better. <laughs> OK, so this kind of more scrunched up wider face with deeper wrinkles if that's what people are expecting, then when they meet me in real life, they go, hey, Kim, you're looking good, right? <laughs> so sometimes there's this notion, you may have heard the phrase um, under promise over deliver, that actually rather than making yourself look all smooth and beautiful. So when people meet you in real life, you look more crinkly, make yourself look even more crinkly. So when they meet you in real life, you actually look more smooth. So nice little tangent there, but I thought worth <laughs> worth going off on. Um, so uh, so, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, April, for for triggering that idea in me. Just that the whole notion that you do have to be that little bit more careful when you do on how much adjustments you make to yourself. Generally speaking, when I'm doing professional portraits of people and they tend to say, make me look 10 years younger, 10 pounds lighter, I warn them of this occasionally do little demonstrations. Um, if they ask me to remove things my um, in Photoshop, my general rule tends to be, would it be there in a month's time? So if you happen to have a spot on the end of your nose, fine, I'll remove the spot. Um, however, if you've got a mole, that's always going to be there. I say keep the mole because if you remove it, people are going to notice it even more when they meet you in person. Um, if you've got to chip out your tooth, but you're going to be going to the dentist, fine, I'll clean up the chip out your tooth. So it's kind of trying to keep it. You're, yes, you're looking for the best version of yourself in a portrait, but the point you start to really alter yourself too much, um, I, sometimes, I, I really do believe you're setting yourself up for a bigger fall by doing so. OK, um, right, where are we? Uh, so... Um, Comments then. Um, so few comments then, and uh, so 
Uh, Sandra says, lovely smile, April. Susan says, uh, uh, looks like you're in a happy place, April. Uh, VG says, beautiful pic. Um, April saying, thank you. Meg saying, lovely uh, photo too. Um, and April says, uh, not much separate difference. I could send you the original. You just need some help when you hit the 50s. Um, so, okay, then we're obviously on to the bit of comments about when I'm now making the adjustments. Uh, April says, Kim, I actually love your fo your eyebrows. <laughs> it's one of your features on your face beside the eyes. Yes, I think you see my eyebrows coming before the rest of me. Um, and, it's, and it's proven that thicker eyebrows make you look younger. Well, I, I, I've never got around to plucking them. This is true. Um, uh, Susan says, I much prefer the real you, Kim. There's much more character there. Um, and uh, oh, VG's laughing. Oh, Nadia's joined us from Benidorm. Welcome, uh, Nadia. Um, delighted you could make it. So you managed to find a, a Wi-Fi connection after all. And uh, John Harvey also says, a nice shot, April. Okay, well, I hope you all found that kind of little uh, detour interesting. Actually, for that matter, I did put in a selfie um, for, well, for close. <laughs> I will show, I, it's not, I mean, not one shot specifically for this, but I, I did do a photo shoot back um, earlier this week, which I'm doing for a magazine, um, which was steampunk themed. Um, now, I'm not going to show you the whole shoot, but I, I, I keep forgetting that when I'm, when I'm on a shoot, I ought to be doing a selfie of the setup and the people I'm with for social media. I actually remember this time, some of you may have seen it. Um, so this essentially becomes my selfie for this week. Uh, this was done at Solway Spirits uh, Gin Distillers, where we, and here we've got uh, Ben and Louisa and their daughter, Immy. Immy was kind of helping out doing some little behind the scenes photography. And uh, Ben and Louisa, Ben's a leather worker and also kind of um, makes, uh, so they're really into that steampunk. But Ben also made this dragon as well, this, this blue leather dragon made out of leather. And it has a little pipe that runs into it, which blows out smoke. And it also has a couple of little LED lights in the mouth. So it sort of lights up and you can see that's what's lighting up the side of my face there. Um, so um, I had to do the selfie with the leather dragon sitting on my shoulder. So that was a kind of fun one to do. Anyway, another little tangent. There you go. Um, oh, Sandra says, love the steampunk spunk selfie. And Fiji says, steampunk selfie and dragon. <laughs> right, okay, on to the final one. Then we'll talk about uh, what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Fiji, so um, Fiji sent in this photo and said, uh, I spent some time today taking self-portraits. I also tried my hand at editing, though the results are not picture perfect. Uh, there was a change of gesture in the mirror image. And if we look here, what we can see is um, on the VG in the foreground, her hand is on her face, um, kind of flatter against her face with her thumb is up. And in the reflection, uh, she's actually, her uh, thumb is down, her hand is further down, and she's only got the finger up to her mouth. So fun kind of idea. And I really like that idea, VG, that you're sort of taking a notion of self-portrait and combining these two different images. I don't know whether it's just the way the light was done or whether it was a different exposure that you combined. This hand on here is looking lighter than the skin on anything else. So I don't know whether it's catching the light or whether it's the exposure was different on the two photos that you combined. It looks slightly out of place there, but I like, I think the idea is fun. Also interesting, chance to get to see what's on your bookshelf in the background here. Everything from PG Woodhouse to Game of Thrones as well. <laughs> and How to Draw Horrible Science. That looks like a fun book. <laughs> um, so yes, one of the other problems with doing self-portraits is everybody gets to see what's going on behind you as well. Um, so fun shoot here. I, I kind of tend to feel with this one that I, I think maybe cropping in a little bit further, uh, maybe. And if you sort of in fact, actually, I'll tell you what, let's just um, open that in Photoshop. While it is kind of fun seeing the, the, the book behind, I think the balance of this would work slightly better if we just um, if we were to kind of really because the, the, ultimately it's this bit here. It's this bit that we're most interested in. We're in. We're getting drawn to the face. And I think if you was to sort of come in something like this, maybe if we were to do so, actually, let's go square. So roughly kind of square like that, and then just kind of pull that in. So we're almost using rule of thirds and the little diagonal going down into the corner where your wrist is. And I think that kind of makes a slightly more 
interesting um, picture. I would uh, other options you could do with something like this is if you were to say go black and white. Um, so if we went to hue saturation, desaturated. I think that makes it interesting. That we might need a bit of brightness contrast, lighten it up a bit, um, but also contrast it a touch. The foreground is slightly lighter than the background, uh, than the, the, the version view in the background, but because this is the one that's in focus, this is the one that we're really wanting to see. So I'll possibly darken this one down. So actually, if we were to then say take the curves and darken that down, but then using the masking, lighten you up on this side. Let's go back up to do that at normal 100% and brighten you on something on that side and then the curves darker side could just darken down the other side a little bit more I think something like that kind of becomes um, little. so once you get to something like that I think we've got a, a, a really really interesting self-portrait we've got the um, we're brought much more into the story you know this this story of you in the mirror and maybe the two different hand gestures that are going on uh, you might I think if you were to, to do it to shoot this again you might need to do something whereby you do a, you turn the hand a little bit more so that it becomes more noticeable the, the difference between the hand gestures um, to, to make that story stronger um, but I think actually it's something like a black and white I think and then maybe you could vignette the edges or, or, or do little bits and pieces so anyway th but that was a fun one I thought I, I liked I really liked the fact that you went for that um, and the you know, creating a story narrative out of out of the shoot so uh, yeah well done BG nice one there um, okay a couple more comments uh, April says a creative VG quiet in the library Sandra says interesting reflective portrait um, uh, VG's laughing at the sneak peek of her library. Uh, John says, brilliant idea, VG. Uh, Susan says, well done, VG, great idea. Uh, VG agrees, the eyes are drawn to the subject and thank you for the comments. And likes the black and white version too. Excellent. All right, okay, so thank you so much to everybody who sent in the images. And uh, absolutely, you all deserve double smug points for doing so. It's not an easy thing to, well, as we said, on a technical level and on um, an emotional level to be able to place yourself on the other side of the camera. So double smug points are all there. So 20 points for everybody who sent in uh, a picture. Now, in, in terms of selecting my favorites, um, I think really Andy's one with the kimono. Actually, let's, let's um, Flip back over here. So this is this this has got to be the this is the winner. This is so in so you know, normally you get an extra thirty smug points, but today you get an extra sixty smug points, Andy, for an absolutely outstanding um, self portrait. I think you know both technically there's is the technical excellence, but there's also narrative. There's story. You get a feeling like you're looking into the world of somebody here. Um, so it's absolutely so. Um, uh, congrats to Andy for that. Second place, I think, and there's always a little bit of favoritism because she's my daughter, but I really, I think Meg um, going for it here with the reflection of the, you know, uh, this was taken on Easter day. She's got her Easter bunny together. She's made sure she's getting the reflection right. She's thinking about where the light is coming from the window and everything else. So Meg's second place with, uh, and gets the 40, 40 smug points for that. And then third place, I'm going to go for, um, I'm going to go for VG uh, because I do again. I think it's really thoughtful, creative. Um, this idea of going about really thinking about a narrative, a story behind the picture. That it's not just a case of um, here. This is what I look like. It's a case of um, can we create something else? And, and the use of reflective surfaces and what have you to go beyond uh, just the self. I think is really good. So an extra twenty points to VG for this. And then um, I think what I will also do, I will give a commended to Jack because this was a bit of fun, I think. And I, again, I think this, this notion that there's reflections within reflections and um, that notion of sort of going beyond and really trying something else out. So a commended, so um, an extra 10 points there to Jack for that. So smug points, off to a good start there. Um, and like I say, everybody who's turned up today, 
uh, and left the comment gets um, five sorry it gets an extra it gets 10 smug points rather than the usual five because it's the fourth anniversary um so oh, john says i agree on the winner and susan says well done andy meg and vg it's been lovely to see the faces behind the names um uh, and uh, vg also says congrats andy meg and jack and uh, meg says thank you very much for giving me second place dad <laughs> and it's not just family favoritism um uh so Right. OK, so net, uh, OK, a couple of things. First of all, if you find these podcasts useful, entertaining, um, uh, informative or anything else and you'd like to support them, then buymeacoffee.com forward slash Kim Ayers is one of the ways you can do it. Um, <coughs> smug points, don't forget, smug points are awarded for contribution. The, the reality is these podcasts only survive or only work because it's not just about me giving information. It's about our interaction. OK, the more you give to me, the more I can give back to you. If you don't send me any pictures, I have nothing to talk about. Um, so smug points are handed out on the notion of you turn up, you get smug points. Leave a comment, you get smug points. Put in images for the challenge, you get smug points. Put in images for critique, you get even more smug points. Uh, drag a friend along um, and they start joining us, you get even more smug points. Um, so this is the way you can kind of and then in turn, uh, accumulated smug points. Um, if you get the most for the month, you get to set the challenge. If you get the most for the quarter, then you get a whole podcast dedicated specifically to you, your photos, and whatever aspect of it you would like. Um, so, that in mind, where are we going for the next couple of weeks? Now, in two weeks' time, uh, on the 21st, there won't be a podcast. I'm not going to be here. Uh, we're, we're popping down to see my father in Chesterfield. We'll be away for the weekend, so I won't be back in time for to do the podcast. But what that does mean is um, now Nadia won the um, March challenge, so she gets to set the, the challenge. She set the challenge of shadows. So next week on the 14th, I'm going to talk about shadows. And because there's a number of different ways you can approach the idea of shadows and photography. And some of you know that I have a blog. And my blog is actually called Painting with Shadows, as opposed to photography, which is usually called Painting with Light, because I tend to feel that shadows are a really important aspect of photography. You can understand light all you like, but if you don't understand shadows, you're always going to be missing something with photography. So it's a whole interesting topic. In fact, actually, it's possibly the topic for about three or four podcasts. So I'm going to have to have a little think about which whether I do a kind of general overview of shadows or whether I latch on to one specific aspect of shadows. But that will be done next week on the 14th. And then I will set, set a shadows challenge for the two weeks after that, which will be the 28th. OK, so if you're wanting to make sure that you get um, some more smug points, uh, then make sure you enter that challenge. Also, next week, though, as well as talking a bit about shadows, I will have room for two possibly three, but certainly two feedback options. So again, another way of earning smug points. Um, if Send me your image, and if I decide to use it here in the podcast it, to give feedback to you, but also because it's then benefiting everybody else who's watching, uh, then you will also get extra smug points for that. So uh, next week then, two, possibly three slots, depending on how long I take to talk about the shadows. Um, so that's where we're at. Next week, Shadows, uh, talking about it. The week after that, uh, there won't be a podcast. The week after that, there will you'll be hopefully sending stuff in for the Shadows Challenge. So thank you once again to everybody for sending in their images. Um, oh, Jack says, great program, learned a lot. I'm glad you did. Um, April says, you did great, everyone. Uh, Sandra says, well done, Andy, on first place. And April says, nice topic, Nadia. So, uh, where are we? I do that, I do that, I do that. Um, thank you ever so much for everybody to, to, turning up. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for everybody who took part. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Cheerio.